This press conference is about the work uh, of great people behind me and trying to get the city to finally adopt a resolution for a ceasefire. And as we were just talking earlier, uh, we find it astounding that a call against war has become controversial in the city of Los Angeles. And we've gone through this so many times, from the Vietnam War to all the wars in the Middle East that have not accomplished anything, from Lebanon to Iraq, um, and now in Gaza, what's happened to civilians. So we're calling for uh, a permanent ceasefire and a release of all hostages, Palestinian or Israeli. They're all hostages um, that uh, are under now uh, the duress uh, of, uh, the mil of military, and, and therefore we believe that we need to be providing moral authority on this issue. And the whole world sees what's happening. There's moral outrage throughout the world against the United States. So anti-American sentiment now is spiking uh, as we're dealing with anti-Semitism and Islamophobia here in America. We have to deal with anti-American sentiment throughout the world. So I'm going to have Reverend Mike Hinman start, and then uh, each of them will make uh, comments. Make a statement of that too. Uh, my name is Mike Kinman. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm the rector, which is the senior pastor of All Saints Episcopal Church in Pasadena. And I, I want to echo what my brother Salam said, is that it is befuddling, to say the least, that a call to stop violence, a call for a ceasefire, has become controversial, and yet here we are. The main thing that I hear, and I'm, I'm not unsympathetic to it, when I talk to people about a ceasefire, what I hear back is Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel has a right to defend herself. And I absolutely agree. Every nation, every people, every individual has a right to defend themselves. But what is happening right now is defenseless people are being killed. The people in Gaza have no ability to defend themselves against the Israeli militant. So if your argument is that everyone has a right to defend themselves, that is actually an argument for ceasefire because what is happening right now is the slaughter of a defenseless people, most of whom are women and children. There's a central narrative in our faith around the Christmas story that says that the king was so afraid of the threat to his power that he slaughtered every innocent child to make sure that they could kill one child who would be a threat to him. That is not set up in our faith as a story of someone you want to emulate. That is set up of a story of societal evil that preys on the weak and preys on the defenseless. And we believe that God became human in Jesus to stand against that. What we see happening in Gaza right now is the slaughter of the innocents in a misguided attempt to do something laudable, to make Israel safe. And the tragedy is not just that innocent people are being slaughtered. The tragedy is that this is making everyone less safe. Violence does not stop violence. It leads to more violence. All that is happening right now is the hardliners on each side are being strengthened by the misery and by the trauma. And the only way to stop that, the only way that Israel, that Palestine, that everyone will be secure is if the fighting stops now so we can have a chance to ask the question, what does healing look like? Thank you. My name is Esty Chandler. It's spelled E-S-T-E-E-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. I'm with Jewish Voice for Peace Action. I'm a native Angelino, and I proudly organize with Jewish Voice for Peace Action. On October 28th, Craig Mokhyber, the director of the New York office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, resigned from his job in his resignation letter, he wrote, what we are watching is genocide. Everyone should be standing up, objecting, and calling for an immediate ceasefire and an end to genocide. 
I am here today to urge the Los Angeles City Council to be on the right side of history and to immediately heed Mr. Mokhyber's call and JVP's call to follow Seattle, Oakland, and other city councils that have passed resolutions calling for a ceasefire now to end the slaughter of tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians in this act of genocide. As Jews, we are standing up and speaking out across the country to say that we will no longer allow our suffering, the suffering of our people, the pogroms, the Holocaust, or Hamas killings to be weaponized against others. The whole world is watching, and we will never forget what our public representatives did in this moment, in these past seven weeks of moments. The way out of this man-made catastrophe is not through military assaults and mass atrocities, but through insisting our public officials address the root causes of this violence, occupation and apartheid. Our public officials should also follow us by calling out and denouncing the horrifying dehumanization of Palestinians by local leaders government officials, and mainstream media. This is a repulsive tool used to normalize the genocidal assault we continue to see and that we continue to protest each and every day. As Jews, we know well how dehumanization is used against oppressed minorities to justify the subjugation and murder. And to that we say, Never again means for everyone. After weeks of Israel depriving, depriving Gaza of clean water, electricity, fuel, and food, with waterborne disease spreading, a much wider disaster is unfolding. With one and a half million people having been purposely displaced from their homes, we implore the Los Angeles City Council to do the right thing, to call for a ceasefire now. Thank you. I'm Pastor William D. Smart Jr., W-I-L-L-I-A-M-D-S-M-A-R-T. I'm the president and CEO of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of, Law, uh, of Southern California, which is the organization that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. set up even here in Los Angeles. You know, it's time for peace. We believe in the beloved community and the beloved community calls on the end to violence, the end to capitalism as a negative force and the end of to white supremacy. And right now we see that, we see all of that taking place over, over, over uh, in Gaza. It's time for a ceasefire that can bring about peace it can bring about a cause. We need right now, we believe in the people of the land, the people of the land of all of those in Israel, all of those in Gaza, all of those in Palestine that are living there. We stand for the people, the people, not the military, not the governments, but the innocent people of Palestine, the innocent people of Israel. The hostages must be released, but Israel must stop the bombing. We need a time for negotiation like never before. This is that opportunity, and we need the City Council of Los Angeles to echo that. We need the council to say in unequivocal terms that let's be peaceful, let's negotiate, let's cease fire, let's come. In our tradition, there's a statement, come, let us reason together. It's time to reason together. It's time to come a, away from this better than we were when we came, when we started out as a people. You know, America in the world can change. There are the principles, there are the religious leaders, there are all types of moral people, all every region of the world. It's time for us all to come together and say, look, 
We want to fix this thing, and we want to stop all of this killing, and we want to heal the land of Palestine. We want to heal the land of Israel, the hatred and the anti-Semitism there, and the Islamic phobia that's taking place and the white supremacy that's taking place. It's time to stop that and move with the dream and the vision that Dr. King offered, uh, offers the world. Come, let us reason together. Good morning, my name is Pastor Q Jamawi. Q is spelled C-U-E. Jamawi is spelled J as in John, N as in Nancy, M as in Marie, A-R-I-E. I am with the Church Without Walls in Skid Row, also with clergy and lady united for economic justice as part of the Black Jewish Justice Alliance. We know that Dr. King, during the Vietnam War, 70% of the nation disapproved of Dr. King because he was calling for a ceasefire. He was against the war in Vietnam. Now, I've been to Vietnam and heard the story from their side. I grew up in churches in America where their theology was toxic, where they spoke and vilified Palestinians, where they spoke and uplifted Israel and Jewish folks. But it wasn't until I began to do this work, I realized that I had been brainwashed. And so I remember the words of a Palestinian psychologist who said that an American soldier can come home after war and have post-traumatic stress syndrome, think they're hearing bombs, but they're not really hearing bombs. It's post, she said, but for Palestinians, it's ongoing trauma where bombs are being dropped. The children are not imagining these things. They are happening. And so for our nation at its highest level, when this thing happened, to jump in the fight and pick sides Instead of picking the side of the people, they pick sides of the military and the powers that be. That should not be. And for our city council and our city leaders, some of who I know fought against apartheid in South Africa to be silent, lets me know that they only care about the next election and not about Palestinians nor Israeli uh, people that are being slaughtered. And yes, both Palestinians and Israeli people are hostages. You can't have thousands of people in custody, in jail, in prison without being charged and tell me they're not hostages. And so we call for an immediate ceasefire. The scriptures tell us in my faith tradition that if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. You can't continue to brutalize and kill hundreds of th or, or, or thousands of people, eh, around 12,000 now, or around, uh, what, 8,000 children. I don't really care what the number is. If you kill one child, you've killed thousands. It hurts my heart to see how we cower and we talk about Dr. King and we'll celebrate Dr. King in January. But right now in November, we can't stand up for what Dr. King stood for. We can't stand up. So we know it's just words and we're not living it with our actions. And we know that these children who are being bombed, innocent people who are being bombed in Palestine right now, their anger is justified. And what we're doing is we're causing more people to join the resistance. One love. Good morning. On behalf of the uh, Muslim community who is living in Southern California, on behalf of the Muslim community who lives in Los Angeles, we have 
hundreds of thousands of our community members who live within the boundaries of the city of Los Angeles. We have tens of Islamic institutes and organizations who are located within the boundaries of the city of Los Angeles. On behalf of each one of them, and behalf of all the people who are peace lovers, who would like to see an end to this violence, we ask you to strongly stand up and support a permanent ceasefire, not a temporary ceasefire. Over the past six weeks, we've seen painful images coming out of Gaza. We've seen fathers carrying the dead bodies of their daughters. We've seen children crying, trying to wake up their dead mothers. We've seen siblings soothing and calming each other when they're only three or four or five years old. These painful images should not keep going on. We, as humans of Los Angeles, have the responsibility to make sure that this does not happen at this time, at this age, and this world that we're living in, when we call ourselves civilized, when we call ourselves advanced and modern and democratic. This is unacceptable in any measure and any standard. Something else that's been taking place for the past several weeks, the peace lovers, those who are supporting the victims, those who are supporting the innocent civilians who are being killed and bombarded in Gaza, their voices have been suppressed. Their opinions have been ignored. Their points of view have been rejected. We need to make sure that you are listening and hearing all points of view, all voices, regardless which side of this conflict they stand on. On behalf of myself, and behalf of the Shura Council of Southern California, and on behalf of the Muslim community of Southern California and Los Angeles, I strongly ask you to stand by a permanent ceasefire and end of the occupation so we don't have to see this cycle of violence again. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Constantine Anthony. I am the mayor of the city of Burbank, but today I'm not speaking in my official capacity. I'm here today as a Greek American. I was raised in the Christian Orthodox Church, and um, I had stayed out of this conversation for a very long time, but a few weeks ago there was an incident with uh, St. Porphyros Church, the uh, um, Christian Orthodox uh, Greek Church in Gaza that had sustained heavy damage and uh, people were injured and killed um, when the uh, attacks ended up destroying a building right next door to the church. For weeks, for weeks now, um, the folks behind me, um, independent movements like the uh, Palestinian Youth Movement, the Jewish Voices for Peace, many individuals across this country have been calling for a ceasefire, had been asking for talks of peace, and um, opponents told us that would never happen that uh, it was preposterous for us to ask uh, for that. Um, no, 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 no ceasefire, you're being ridiculous. And now those same opponents are falling over themselves, congratulating um, the president and the deal that's been struck for the humanitarian pause. Suddenly they're on board uh, with peace. Um, but we know that that's not enough. We know that whatever they call it, humanitarian pause, a break in the, the war, it doesn't matter what you call it as long as the peace is sustained. A permanent ceasefire, that is the only true path to peace. To get individuals, to get the organizations causing this horrific trauma to lay down their arms and work together to find a solution. There's been so many wars over the years, over the decades, and the lessons we have learned seem to be lost on those in power. Um, many folks have considered this fight uh, similar to what happened with um, Ireland and England back in the, the 80s and the 90s. 
um, violence on both sides for, for many years, decades. And yet, at the end, peace was brokered. How do we get there from here? How do we move forward? And it's having these tough conversations. It's being able to talk to each other, um, not telling each other things are impossible, not saying to someone else, no, you can't ask for that. It's finding that compromise. It's looking at the solutions available to us and working through it. At some point, at some point, we will learn our lesson, I hope. Um, I have great hope in humanity. I have great hope in our future. I have great hope in the young people of this country who are looking at things um, with new eyes, who are doing their research, who are understanding the history, who are not taking what is told to them at face value, digging deeper, listening to a diversity of voices. That's how we get to the truth. Um, so I stand in solidarity with not just the folks behind me, but everyone out there, anyone watching this, anyone who's out on social media, anyone who's wondering why, why the violence? I stand with you in questioning that. I stand with you in asking your leaders why. Thank you. Good morning. I am Reverend Calvin Sauls. That's K-E-L-V-I-N-S-A-U-L-S. I stand before you today with a torn heart, with uh, pain going through me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I was born and raised in South Africa. I live and work in Los Angeles. What I see going on with my Palestinian citizen brothers, I've seen before. I've known about it, not just from a distance growing up in the township of Cliptown, south of Johannesburg, but being there physically visiting in the village of Warifakin, where I spent a couple of days with my Palestinian siblings, walked through the checkpoints of Hebron, found myself <coughs> being delayed in so many ways at the airport in Tel Aviv during my visit. And so what we see going on right now is basically the escalation of an ongoing enterprise of colonial, of settler colonialism, as well as the occupation and the incarceration of Palestinians. And so we are certainly aware of this first violence that took place. A lot of us talk about the second violence, the response to violence. That's the same thing that happened with us in South Africa. And so while we are all for nonviolence, it is important for us to also make sure that we talk about Nonviolent responses, just like we're talking about an end to settler colonialism as well as the occupation of Palestine. And so we stand here saying, while we are in this pause, we hope it's a pause for perspective. This is not a time for inflection. I believe this is a time for deflection because it is a reflection on the fact that the United States and its allies, including the state of Israel, they've continued to side and go for military might instead of moral might. We are here together as a robust interfaith coalition that stretches not just, you know, uh, that's not just here in Southern California, but around the country. I'm a proud member of Jewish Voices for Peace and all of um, my anti-Zionist Jewish citizen brothers. We're calling for a permanent ceasefire as a pathway to ending 
settler colonialism as well as occupation. Now is the time for us to see how it is that we can realize that it's not just what happened on one day in October, but what happened since 1948. It's not just about the, the, the exchange of hostages and prisoners. It's the exchange of hostages and hostages. Because Palestinians has been held hostage since 1948. And so we stand here together as men and women of faith, of conscience, to say that we are committed to realize moral might over military might. And so we say, end the cease, we're calling for a ceasefire. Now is the time for us to do so. This is a humanitarian crisis that's been going on for a long time. And we want to be clear that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. We want to make sure that we don't fall into the trap of those two being conflated. And I say that because I just re saw that Elon Musk showed up, right, in Israel. I'm not surprised, you know, because Elon Musk grew up under apartheid South Africa. That's where he got his wealth from. And so this conflation continues to cause confusion. And we want to say we want to continue to stand for a permanent ceasefire that provides us with pathways to ending settler colonialism and the occupation of Palestine. That's what we're here for. That's what we are committed to. And we're committed to that from an abolitionist framework and with a destination of emancipation for everybody. Emancipation for everybody. Liberation for everybody. So that's why I'm here. I'm the co-founder of the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. We stand for a ceasefire and an end to the occupation. I'm here with Clergy for Black Lives. I'm here as a black South African who is for nonviolent, direct resistance, but who want to make sure that we understand that the beginning of the end of that starts with ending settler colonialism, the occupation and mass incarceration of our Palestinian sisters and brothers. Cease fire now. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate I think what we're all calling for, as we said, we want the city of Los Angeles to come on record calling for a ceasefire now. And we want a release of all hostages. And we want a political compromise so that the government stop compromising the lives of innocent people. That is what is happening. So I really appreciate this tapestry of America. This is what America represents the faces, the diversity, the different faiths, the different perspectives. And this is what the Holy Land is supposed to be. It is supposed to be the place where there's coexistence among Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And all of us will work for that. That's the true work of peace. Sons and daughters of Abraham. Sons and daughters of Abraham. We are all followers of Abraham. That land was promised to all the followers of Abraham. So let us work for peace by working for justice. As Mar Martin Luther King says, peace is not the absence of tension. Peace is the presence of justice. Thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate it. All right.